My name is David Graham, I'm a consultant gastroenterologist at University College London Hospital and I wanted to give you a brief overview today on how to assess bat's esophagus in order to increase your dysplasia detection rate. The first thing we need to do is ensure that we measure the length of bat's esophagus appropriately. First step is to find the gastroesophageal junction. This is very simply done but often got wrong. Do not overinsufflate the esophagus, ensure you can still see the gastric folds and then at that point at the top of the gastric folds is where the GOJ is. You can look for palisade vessels if you, uh, if you want to, but actually, in reality, this simple step of not over the esophagus should be sufficient. Once you've found the GOJ, you can measure the length of balanced esophagus using the prior classification. There is the circumferential me measurement, the C, followed by the maximal extent, the M. Make sure you always document the, the prior classification in every balance report. You should be spending one minute per one centimeter of bounce esophagus when assessing a bounce esophagus segment. This is not a static measurement. You don't sit still and watch bounce for one minute. It's constant pull throughs up and down through the esophagus to ensure you're looking at the esophageal walls at all time. Please ensure that you use your enhanced image settings. Don't just use what high definition white light. Switch on your narrow band, your BLI or your eye scan to ensure you assess using all those image enhancement techniques. When looking for displays, you're looking for gross signs. These are nodules, ulcers, and asymmetry of the wall. You may all see some friability of the, of the uh, bat esophagus segment, and certainly you should target those areas. There's also more subtle signs where you're looking at the mucosal and vascular changes um, associated with, with dysplasia. There are classification systems you can look up and we'll certainly link to you on our site, such as the blink classification, the bing classification, or the eye scan classification, where one looks for these changes either in mucosal pattern, where you have a move away from the tubobilis pattern to something like amorphous or irregular, or the vascular changes where you find you have fibril vessels or thickened vessels that can show that there's dysplasia there. Another thing you must do as part of your bounce esophagus segment is to use acetic acid. Studies have demonstrated that the use of acetic acid of 2.5% increases your dysplasia detection rate. Spray acetic acid into the esophagus, and the mantra I've always lived my life by is if the esophagus goes white, that's all right. If it lacks acetic whitening, that is very, very frightening. And if you, that happens, you should certainly target a biopsy in that area. The last thing to remember with assessment of the bowel esophageal, esophageal segment is to ensure that you go into the stomach, retroflex, and look at the GOJ from below. We know that if you're going to see dysplasia, it's often, most often going to be at the GOJ, often seen from below better, or in the 12 o'clock to 5 o'clock position, so please concentrate on those areas. Hopefully, using those steps, you'll increase your dysplasia detection, and I hope that's been helpful. There'll be more tips and tricks for you available on our website at gastrolearning.com and we really look forward to seeing you at London Live Endoscopy on the 26th to 28th of November.